On tonight's MPTV panel, we're discussing Sydney versus Melbourne. Different prices, different hot spots. Joining me uh, from Empower Wealth, Ben Kingsley, from the REIV, Robert LaRocca, and from Fletcher's Real Estate, Tim Fletcher. Tim, you're a Melbourne boy. Yes. You, you, your business is here. What do you make of Sydney? Do you know much about it? Well, I know a bit about it, but um, I've got to declare I've lived all my life basically in the eastern suburbs of Melbourne. But I, in this business, you've got to think beyond where you live. Yeah. And I've had plenty of times to go to Sydney, and I think it's a marvellous place. It's so different to Melbourne, isn't it, um, in terms of the harbour views that, that we haven't got. That's not putting Melbourne down. I love the place. But it's such a diverse difference. Similar number of people, about 4 million people. Uh, a lot of people move from Sydney to Melbourne and therefore the relationship in terms of what their property's worth is very important because so often in the days when Sydney was way, way ahead of Melbourne, people would go to Melbourne, uh, go from Melbourne to Sydney and say, I've got to get this amount of money for my property in Melbourne because I'm going to Sydney. You say, well, look, it doesn't work like that. The cha it's changed a lot. Sydney's a little bit ahead in terms of its medium price, uh, but values have certainly come back to being much closer. OK, Robert, so what are the median prices and the difference between Melbourne and Sydney at the moment? I mean, the metrics are important. Uh, Sydney is the most expensive capital in Australia in many respects. It is more expensive than Melbourne, probably looking at around 50000 depending upon you know, the property you're looking at. Um, the rents are more expensive in Sydney. Um, but you look over the last 10 years, and this goes back to what Tim was saying, that Melbourne has caught up. I mean, Sydney has had a very stagnant period of property growth over the last decade, whereas Melbourne had a period of strong growth in the last half of the last decade, which has brought us up closer to Sydney. The variable's getting closer. The challenge for Sydney is to get enough housing. Melbourne has become blessed. We are our demand and supply more imbalance. Um, in Sydney, um, the federal government project that we're probably going to see a large gap in the number of homes needed over the next decade. That's going to be the big challenge for affordability in Sydney. Ben, we're looking Melbourne, Sydney. What are the areas? If you were buying a three-bedroom home as, a, as an investment or three-bedroom property as an investment... Melbourne and Sydney, where would you be looking? Look, you want to look at your growth corridors and you want to look at your access points in terms of ease to getting to employment centres. So along train lines, um, certainly in Sydney is quite important. Uh, you're talking about Sydney as a market. It's actually sort of three markets. You've got the... Um, Chatswood area, which is quite a high density area. You've got your Parramatta area, which is almost like a second CBD in the Sydney metropolitan area. And then obviously you've got your main CBD. So if you're around those employment centres, depending on what your budget's going to be, uh, from an investment point of view, I probably wouldn't be chasing three bedroom houses. I'd be chasing more of the sort of apartments where there is that transient people who are who are going to be looking for working opportunity to be in the, the groovy parts of Sydney. And, uh, and that's where you're going to get your best rent from. And what about in Melbourne then? Comparatively? Look, in, in Melbourne, I'm, I'm also quite bullish on, on the Northern Corridor and the corridors are again supported by rail as opposed to trams. So I think we're going to see a real gentrification happen along, you know, Brunswick area, along those sort of high street corridors. Also, I think the Mount Alexander Road corridor over the next five to 10 years is going to see a lot of transition to sort of medium density. And that's the difference between Sydney and Melbourne. You get off the airport at Sydney and the moment you get off there, there's five, seven, 10, 13, story apartment blocks and they're as far as the eye can see you, you land in Melbourne and basically you know within only within sort of three to four kilometres of town do you get that density level yeah that, that's the challenge for Sydney because they're constrained uh, in the land they have whereas Melbourne is not so that's why you face that you know massive build up as soon as you get there yeah. yeah what about for Melbourne where would you be looking well, I, I think we can ignore the Eastern Corridor, and I agree with Ben. I think it's very important to look at areas that are on transport links or freeways and look what's happened to the Eastern Freeway at the extension going further out. And as a result of that, you know, from Kew, basically from the inner s suburban area of Richmond, way out to Heathmont, and you get all those suburbs along, Blackburn, et cetera, et cetera, are all doing particularly well. If you're looking at apartments, I think uh, areas like uh, Doncaster, where the, the, there's a, a significant hub being built there, uh, Hawthorne, uh, Richmond. Um, th there really are a number of pockets where people can have a good lifestyle and get a good investment as well. We shouldn't ignore Yarraville. I think that's got great potential. Uh, and those areas between Melbourne and Geelong, uh, we're pushing more towards Geelong. 
Um, so, you know, we're going to see some changes in the next couple of years as, as, as transport and, and facilities and infrastructure develop. As far as you can, would you say who's the better investment, Sydney or Melbourne at the moment, do you think, as it stands? I think you do well in both areas. I mean, the Sydney side would say Sydney and a Melbourne person would say he wouldn't go beyond Melbourne. But look, if you get some good apartments around the water there at Bondi and Bronte and those sort of areas, I don't think you'd go too far wrong. Uh, but in, in terms of Melbourne, any of those areas I've mentioned... Uh, particularly close to the city if you're looking at investment and apartments uh, that have got some style and some character to them, I don't think you can go too far wrong. It's probably less about which city as opposed to where in which city is the, is the issue because you know, they're big, both big places and you can get areas of low capital growth and high capital growth. You know, it's really where in that city you've got to, you know, we've said it before, do your homework, get to know that place uh, and that'll help make your investment decision. So you could go wrong and right in both towns? You can and you can also go wrong and right in each suburb. I mean you could have a fantastic suburb that ticks all the boxes but in being a terrible location within that suburb and that asset's going to underperform. You know we're not buying the suburb, you know you've heard me say this before, we're buying an individual asset in that particular location so you want to leverage from the demand drivers and the lifestyle drivers that are available in that area. So what Tim said before is true. We, we keep centering back to where the employment centres are and where the lifestyle drivers and the infrastructure is all well developed. And then we're going to see this sort of uh, backfill of infrastructure where we're seeing more of these uh, medium density type apartments that are going to go up into those areas and they're going to drag the value of those assets up. So I'd, I'd be sort of cherry picking some of the more established uh, properties for our clients in both markets. So there's opportunities in both markets as we speak. And should people be thinking, if I'm in Melbourne, should I think, well, I'll just look in Melbourne? Or should people actually consider going to Sydney for a weekend and talking to people and looking around, but just to not necessarily just invest in your own backyard? Yeah, true. If we're doing a strategy for, uh, for our investor clients, we would usually try and buy the first property in that market if we saw opportunity in that market. Once you've got one here, though, then you might spread your wings and go into state because of obviously land tax issues. And as you start building a portfolio of properties up, we, we certainly like the idea of a bit of diversification in your, in your portfolio. But I've got to say, don't, don't go to Sydney for the weekend and come back and having bought a property. No. Yeah, no, no, absolutely not. You've got to do, we've talked about it so many times, do your homework. And you cannot possibly do your homework on such a, a, a significant investment like property and understand the market in a weekend. I don't think you can do it in a week either. You need to spend some time there or employ experts to do it who are doing this all the time. Uh, then you won't get bitten. But otherwise, I think you can get into real trouble. All right, gentlemen, thanks for joining us. I think fair enough to say you're lucky if you're buying a property in either city. Back with more in a moment. Make sure you join us next week for an MPTV exclusive interview with Victorian Planning Minister Matthew Guy. This show is brought to you by the Real Estate Institute of Victoria and realestateview.com.au.